Inquire to me is kind of a is a tough thing to pinpoint. At least it was for for me in the early going. About, about I guess about maybe about five years ago, I really started thinking about what motivates students to learn, and I found that in a lot of cases, most students. Um, throughout their school experience have been extrinsically motivated. Maybe that's by grades or because their parents told them to or because there's a set of consequences if they don't do their work mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. But when I, when I really thought about it, the, the students who um, were kind of getting the most out of their education, most out of the, the curriculum, most out of what I was trying to teach, were the kids who were, who were, cur who were truly curious, mm -hmm. genuinely curious about um, what they were learning. And I found excited. that, that, yeah, and excited about it, and that's a real, it's kind of an intrinsic thing, so that, um, so for me, when I could, when I had a moment where I could really get that, that, hu that where I saw the human curiosity kind of starting to emerge, mm -hmm. to me, that was sort of the spark, um, and to me, inquiry is a whole process, it's not just that, that one thing, but the human curiosity piece is so crucial, and it's that one, it's that spark, so from mm -hmm. there, I kind of feel my role is more as a facilitator. So I, you have to kind of work them through that process mm -hmm. and give them the skills and, and um, whatever abilities they mm -hmm. need to be able to, to answer those questions they have. So, you know, if it's a, if it's a you, you, every teacher's got those teachable moments where mm -hmm. you, you look out in the crowd and there's a ton of kids who are all of a sudden switched on yep. because the hands go up or whatever the case is, they get really quite curious. And so those are those moments where you want to, um, it's, it's hard to, um, it's hard to force those, and so you really have to work hard at trying to raise that, like I say, mm -hmm. that curiosity out of the kids. Little things like just um, putting uh, the curricular objectives in kid-friendly language mm -hmm. and sort of setting them as learning goals are really crucial because then they, they sort of have that umbrella of what, what we're right. kind of learning. And then from there, uh, wh what, I'll, what I'll try to do is, I, I, with every kind of lesson or project, I try to have some little hook. Mm -hmm. And um, some hooks all work better than others, and teachers know this, mm -hmm. but um, if I can, can kind of hook them, all of a sudden they're that kind of mm -hmm. light bulb goes on, and they're a little more curious. And there's, there's, real, um, there's some real true, you can really see it. Mm -hmm. um, you can see hands go up. You can see faces light yeah. up. You can maybe if it's written, you can see questions being asked rather than than always just statements mm -hmm. being being handed in. So really, kind of encouraging students to to ask questions and be curious. But again, under that umbrella of, of and helping them remain focused on what what we're trying to learn. Right. So that's been kind of the biggest thing that's helped me lately. Anyways, we're studying uh, in, at the grade ten level. Mm -hmm. We're stu studying NAFTA, and mm -hmm. so um, I was really worried that. I wanted to do kind of an inquiry-based research project, um, but I was really worried that students would just um, simply answer what is NAFTA and just sort of a regurgitation. But so where I what I asked them is, um, do you have an opinion? And mm -hmm. right off the bat, there were no opinions because they just they weren't front-end loaded. They didn't have any right. prior knowledge. They just they didn't know. So um, so what I did was I put a series of images up. Um, um, if you look at the spectrum of um, strongly agree to strongly disagree with, uh, with NAFTA, I just kind of picked images that sort of express both ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, everything from, from protesters to, um, to uh, uh, suits shaking hands, mm -hmm. like, like just, mm -hmm. you know, that, that kind of idea. Yeah. And, uh, so George Bush and Stephen Harper. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sitting around, yeah. And uh, President Fox out of yeah. uh, Mexico. So right. when, we, when I when I had them sort of look at those images, what was really neat was um, there was reaction to that. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I knew, okay, now, now kids are actually thinking about this and, and there's a little bit of their caring. So mm -hmm. when I could start seeing reactions to the images, and then my setup was, okay, so what's causing people to feel at one end of the spectrum or another? Mm -hmm. And so I gave them a few front end questions to kind of explore, but that wasn't the research project. It was just mm -hmm. to kind to of explore. Yeah. And, and that and just shows too the real the importance of front loading. Exactly. To get into the inquiry. Yeah, and yeah. I mean it's hard it's tough to have an opinion. Yeah. Well I shouldn't say that it's easy to have an opinion without having prior knowledge, but to mm -hmm. have a really kind of an maybe a more formed opinion that you can actually back up, which is I mean essentially what we're trying to teach um, right. so you know that um, civic responsibility and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. anyways, I, uh, what I found was after, after those images and after asking the question, what's your opinion, and then giving them some starters, starter mm -hmm. questions to kind of explore, what I found was um, the natural inclination to start collecting information about 
what's good about NAFTA and what's bad about NAFTA mm -hmm. in, or, in order to figure out where they kind of fit on the spectrum. So it was kind of a neat assignment where, um, but but it doesn't have to be images. It, like you say, it can, it be, can, YouTube it can be YouTube. It can be just a, yeah. a quote or a curious question, or you just throw for something sure. up there that um, mm -hmm. a problem, for example, yeah. like yeah. solve this problem. Uh, solve this problem. Yeah. We uh, we need uh, we have mm -hmm. people shipping all over the world. Social studies. We're talking about global economics. So right. um, we were talking about how containers are now all the same size in social studies. Um, shipping mm -hmm. containers because mm -hmm. they need to fit on trucks and they need to pack into. I mean, instead of playing Tetris on the boats, yeah. these containers have to fit, right? Mm -hmm. So I just asked the students, um, you know, how would you solve the problem of of, of um, shipping worldwide? Mm -hmm. And we sort of, we you know, we kind of got there, got there, From got there, the and, and then yeah. without even telling them um, one word about how these containers are are mm -hmm. now the same. Uh, shape, they kind of landed on that on their own, and then from there, like it's those things. So, mm -hmm. it, and it's not inquiry to me isn't just um, research projects and giving them one thing they got to go find out. It's really, um, it's it's opening up it's the doors to. Uh, and again, yeah. the way you do that is with those umbrella questions. Like this is what we're studying. Yeah. So it's sparking interest, and then you know, um, creating that desire to to have their questions yeah. answered. And, yeah, and it's it's tough because a lot of teachers want to fence in what they're doing, mm -hmm. which, which isn't a bad thing because you have to, but mm -hmm. um, I just like a little wider fence is sort of... Mm -hmm. I like the wider fence, Yeah, too. wider fence, yeah. yeah. When I first saw the new social studies curriculum, I looked at all of those bullets, mm -hmm. and probably like every social studies teacher in the in the province, you just, you, you see so much. Mm -hmm. But um, what I found was uh, if I really... Um, work on going through the inquiry process, like mm -hmm. the cycle, and, and not every project you're going to do the entire cycle, but you know, kind of working with that. I found that a lot of those um, skill objectives um, were and, and value objectives, mm -hmm. and some of those things were just kind of naturally met, and it really took a lot of the of the burden off of me, yeah. and I, I really could just sort You're of handing over the learning yeah, to the students. And, and, yeah, and it was um, it wasn't like I had to check things off a list anymore. Mm -hmm. It was sort of like I, I said, okay, what's the spirit here? What do, what do the what do the kids really need to know? Yeah. And then from there, what what ended up happening was uh, th once they started focusing in on that learning, all the all the curriculum curricular outcomes were just were kind of just bled right into yeah. the project, and it wasn't something I ne needed to say, okay, we are tackling this now. Mm -hmm. And it made assessment way easier because mm -hmm. I could just sort of like I have all these curricular objectives that, that I'm, I know I, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm covering even though that that's not really what mm -hmm. my purpose my mm -hmm. intent was I I don't want to I don't want to cover the yeah. curriculum I want to oh you're meeting wanna, the outcomes yeah, yeah meeting yeah. the outcomes yeah. but uh, what I found was I could just sort of say okay maybe kids let's just zero in on these two because and and so you'd build a rubric or you'd or you'd mm -hmm. do some sort of a self assessment or something like that but you I, I just found it was. It just took so much of the burden off when I could just sort of naturally go through this whole process of inquiry. So it was, it's been helpful. But My uh, number one thing is just don't be scared. Like, don't be worried about it because um, just trying it in baby steps. And um, to me, that um, I've used the resource focus for inquiry a little bit um, that, that's been put out. And, and when you first look at that, it just seems so big and so difficult. And every project needs to be nine weeks in, in the library. And, and, and just realizing that inquiry isn't, isn't about that. Inquiry really is um, equipping the kids with a set of skills to be able to answer their own questions. And so if I could, if I could um, give teachers around the province one sort of piece mm -hmm. of advice it is let the kids ask questions let them let the, and, and let them find out the answers find ways to make sure that those um, that you you like you say with with the fence that you can fence those so that they fit underneath your umbrella mm -hmm. so that you're meeting the curriculum but but don't um, but don't limit them so really let them be curious and and the other thing is um, for me one of the things that I've learned is the variety like let them have choice in in, in the way they're they present their their um, work to you, their learning to you. Because if you if you keep them within so a tight parameter, differentiate based you, you, on you interest have and to choice. differentiate. And so, um, what I found is is when I try to cover too many curricular objectives at once, and I try to assess all of those curricular objectives at once, my project becomes really narrow. When I when I try to assess maybe one or two, I find that um, if if I can just keep it to one or two, then then my product, the the, the product that the students give, can be a, a little more open. So, it, in terms of best practices, you know, there 
keep keep going to PD, keep finding ways mm -hmm. to, to make sure that students um, have a variety of ways to, to differentiate and, and, and different products they can hand in. Keep learning those best practices, but for me the key is is once you have sort of that, maybe that toolbox of things mm -hmm. that, that students can use um, and, and projects they can hand in and some of those those skills and strategies you have, from there just let the kids be curious and don't, and don't um, kind of always, uh, I mean, you have to reel them in, but, but let, them, let them be curious, so. What I've really tried to do is, is um, allow students to um, use technology, but the technology itself, um, let, maybe it's a website, maybe it's, a, it's an application, maybe it's, um, um, maybe it's as simple as even a written essay or something like that, whatever the product is, um, don't, um, the, the product itself isn't what they're learning, mm -hmm. it's they're learning the curriculum through the product. And so for me, um, I've used some, some different um, websites like Animoto and VoiceThread mm -hmm. and um, I've used different applications like PhotoStory and um, I mean students are used to PowerPoint but they've done Movie Maker or, or even using their digital camera to, mm -hmm. to capture their own clips but um, I, I just believe that not everything they do needs to be um, a paper and pen type of a, an mm -hmm. assignment and so they can ex just allowing students the freedom to kind of express themselves in different ways right. as long as like for example getting back to that NAFTA project the, the, the true thing I wanted mm -hmm. them to do was to be able to support their opinion so how they how they demonstrate their opinion w could be endless and so like I say some students went on voice thread and they and they it's a it's a website where basically it's a slideshow they can add their voice to some students um, some students chose to write the essay mm -hmm. some students chose to um, uh, do a uh, kind of a, a visual essay using photo story but all of all of the while the, the the intent was to express their or support their own opinion and so it's really crucial that um, as a teacher what I've learned is it's not about the product uh, the product is just the vehicle so where this came out of is I went to a, an inquiry PD session and and one of the things they stressed was um, or not stressed but introduced us to was this whole idea of blogging so you know I kind of listened and, and and thought about it for a while and then uh, what I found was during classroom discussions I, I really wanted to do some uh, formative and summative assessments on their um, on their discussion uh, their ability to, to have meaningful discussion and uh, and what I found was there's a number of kids who they just don't they don't feel comfortable in that setting and it didn't matter if it was a, a pod discussion or a class discussion or even a discussion after class um, kind of a one-on-one -on -one or a one-on-two -on -two kind of a discussion with the teacher they just weren't they weren't expressing themselves you know through their voice so um, what I found was if I asked the same questions electronically where the students were kind of um, I knew their username but they were hidden behind a username to the rest of the class and to the people and to, to everybody else they what they could express to each other was really quite powerful and that was that was that particular their their ideas were silent in the classroom but then once we got into this sort of cyber world mm -hmm. all of a sudden there was really kind of interesting conversations what I found was um, you know, a thread in a blog, kid, kids would naturally start a discussion and, and they would naturally start um, debating, they would start arguing, they would, mm -hmm. you know, and, and as a moderator I could kind of at least control what, what was out there. there. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I but to be honest with you, I just allowed them to just go with it. And so again, mm -hmm. those teachers who in a in a classroom conversation with only so much time on the clock and the bell's just about to go, mm -hmm. they, they feel like they need to again fence those kids in. But with this blog I could just sort of pose we again grade ten globalization, we talked about the the World Trade Organization. I just posed a question about um, you know, kind of a, a controversial question about whether they were doing more harm than good um, with the, their work with developing nations and all of a sudden both ends of the spectrum people who agree people disagree started um, jumping in on the blog and it just took off from there so just evidence for me with my blog was in a classroom discussion I would have and, and teachers know this you'll have maybe 50% of the kids participating verbally the other there's another 25% who are participating but they're just sort of listening and observing and then you maybe have as many as 25% if it's a poor discussion who aren't even interested. Mm -hmm. But then when I got onto the blog, I, I looked and you can see how many comments. So this one conversation about the WTO in a mm -hmm. class of 30, I had over 80 comments uh, back and forth. Now again, not everybody's participating, but if, if you, if you treat, I treat the blog like an extension of classroom discussion. So mm -hmm. we start things in the classroom and then move to the blog. And again, there's that, th that whole process of inquiry can be that simple. I just posed a question. There's some curiosity. Students actually were, were um, 
posting web links of, of uh, yeah. information like, hey, look at this web link and see what you think. They were um, citing the textbook. They were citing things that were said in class. It was just amazing. So really for me, um, but it was in the blog. I'm not marking their mm -hmm. ability to participate on the blog. The blog was just an extension of, of the, of the, the classroom and yeah. it's just a vehicle for them to express themselves. So. It, there, there are some things you got to do. You mm -hmm. have to sort of inform parents of what you're doing. You have to you have to s teach the students a little bit of um, of sort of security and internet safety. But but really, ours is um, I'm the moderator. Um, it's a closed blog, so it's only our students in our classroom who are participating in it. Um, but. But what I found was um, once you kind of get the feel for what a blog is, that's sort of step mm -hmm. one. And so it was helpful to do some of the PD I, I had done in the last year on that. Um, but, it, but again, if you just, it, it really is quite simple. I had some support um, uh, from other teachers in the building, uh, teacher librarian, and, and then our, our tech guy. But, but really, if, if, you, if you have some people out there who, can, who maybe done it before or maybe, they, once they sort of show you, you, really, you can set up a blog in half an hour or less. You yeah. can get it set up and you can, I mean, for the kids to log in literally took me probably 15 minutes and they can even do it from home if, if need be. Like it wasn't, you just sort of give them the URL and And you can check moderate in. it. And, and I moderate everything yeah. so all the all the comments kind of come through me and, and I have to approve all the yeah. comments. Um, and But I, I did tell the kids that um, I'm going to let most things pass because I didn't spell check. I didn't, uh, you know, if they had an idea, I just put it out there. Mm -hmm. The only things I really moderated were, were as anything that might be, um, um, might threaten a, a, another student, so one mm -hmm. student to another. Like clearly, I'm not going to put that on. But, but that, to, to be honest with you, that there was only one case yeah. of, of that happening, and it was it was really quite an elementary thing. So, mm -hmm. of the the and literally and I remember thousands talking of you just a humorous thing. I think it was yeah. one of the students translated it into German, in German or something. Yeah, we, just to probably be funny. Which in is the <laughs> I, I probably in the last semester I've probably approved a thousand comments, and really mm -hmm. it's just an idea. It's it's just skimming over and seeing what mm -hmm. they're saying and pressing up and letting the kids do the talking. It's not right. about the teacher, it's about the kids. So literally, um, I'll sit down. It'll take me, uh, honestly, for, f to, to approve some comments after, at the end of a day or at the end of a week, a minute. You mm -hmm. just kind of scan through them because it's about the kids, not about the teacher. And you're trying to get that, that discussion going. But we, out of the thousand comments I had, I probably, I think there were three that I wasn't, uh, that yeah. I didn't approve. <laughs> one was because one of the students put his comment that he typed it up, mm -hmm. put it into a German translator, right. and then fired it up on the yeah. website in yeah. German. So Which we all love those students. Yeah. So <laughs> then I asked, I asked the kid, I said, what are you doing? And he goes, well, yeah. I just thought you would just put it back in the translator and translate it back <laughs> for me. I'm like, why would I? Anyways, he was just kidding yeah. around. But yeah. it was actually a pretty yeah. insightful comment. And he just well, yeah. happened to be in German. Yeah. And, uh, Pretty witty student, exactly. I'm sure. So he redid it, and and uh, and then mm -hmm. he uh, submitted it. And then the other one was uh, uh, some student was basically uh, it was sort of a nothing comment, like um, what you're saying is dumb or something like that. So to me, I just said, you know, no, I'm not going to put not those are the kinds of things. Yeah. But other than that, there was nothing that threatened the kids. It was such a great place for kids to because they knew I was moderating. Right, mm -hmm. they knew I was moderating. It was just a great place for them to hold the discussion. And every now and then, I would I would uh, post a comment of my own. Uh, but I, I really tried to stay out of it as much as possible, uh, and let the kids do the learning um, rather than me always kind of dictating what's going to be talked about, what discussion mm -hmm. you're going to have, and where and where the direction of the conversation. But again, it started with curricular objectives. It started with sort of focused discussion on the on in this case the World Trade Organization, and went uh, went from there. So a couple things have really um, I, I feel I've really made some improvements in that is one really um, um, explicitly uh, making the curriculum explicitly stated um, it's clear to the students mm -hmm. because everything is kind of focused I, I so really almost do uh, using backwards design backwards or, design yeah. yeah with the end in mind absolutely mm -hmm. um, I, I really try to that's been the kind of the number one thing is really making sure the students um, know what what they're learning um, because if, if I treated it like a checklist and we covered this and covered the at the end of the term some students if you ask them some simple questions um, that were more the umbrella questions they wouldn't be able to answer but when you really sort of say hey here's kind of what we're trying to tackle today here's our issue here's our question here's our focus then um, then what I found is they've been really um, they kind of they, they get it mm -hmm. and so that that's kind of been the number one thing and and sort of what goes hand in hand with that is then the learning goals are kind of um, they they're they're sort of natural so for example if we're, right now we're studying kind of the impact of grade 10 globalization we're studying the impact of transnationals so I put up 
how are they affecting people and and I just keep going back to pros and cons with the students and so we're just building a giant pros and cons list because that's what effects are they're either positive and they're negative so um, and the students are starting to find that the that that the effects are can jump back and forth and and so then from there when I say that the learning goals are kind of attached um, you know the other day I expressed to the kids like what are we trying to do here well we're trying to just we're trying to have a deeper understanding of how transnationals are affecting people around the world so now what's happened to my pros and cons list is now there's one for developed countries there's one for developing countries and there's less developed countries and the kids are naturally doing that and so it, it, what I've just found is that if I can explicitly state what we're trying to get at and uh, and really stay focused on that then all of the activities and all of the projects and all of the the things that you're asking students to do they're starting to naturally fit under that whatever umbrella we're under that particular day so that's been number the number one thing and where that stemmed from was through the inquiry process because when I noticed kids being naturally curious I needed to I needed some way to reel that in and the way I made made it make sense for me was is if the questions and the curiosity was stemming from one of our umbrellas one of our focus questions then uh, then we could let's go for it let's tackle that right and so um, they can like I said the, the, that allowed me to kind of expand my fence a little bit so it's just been Again, if I can, if I could, if I could tell teachers around the province one thing, it's it's just really um, make sure that the kids understand simply what are we trying to do here? Like, what are we trying to learn? And from there, and be th they'll naturally um, they'll naturally put things underneath their own umbrella. So.